My name is Rashid. I'm Moroccan. I am a former Muslim. I used to to be a Muslim in Morocco for for um, 19 years. Then I converted in 1990, and I have lived in Morocco as a secret believer for for Christ in uh, since 1990 until 2005. I did a lot of stuff with the Bible Society, translating the Bible, distributing the Bible inside the country, and uh, I even started a project to translate the Quran to the Moroccan dialect. Now I work in the media, and I do um, shows for Middle East and North Africa and try to explain to them what is the differences between Christianity and Islam. And uh, so far we recorded more than 77 uh, live episodes, half, one hour and a half each, and 55 episodes of another show taped, uh, uh, all comparing Christianity and Islam. I was raised in a Muslim family, very traditional, very conservative. My dad is an imam. He's uh, still an imam in a mosque until today. And uh, my grandpa also can, uh, was an imam. My uncle was an imam, so all our family members are uh, really uh, devout Muslims. And uh, I was raised at six years old. Um, I memorized uh, one-sixth of the Quran. I started going to the mosque at age of four, and I learned all the prayers at age of four. I did the washing and everything at age of four. And um, uh, I was raised as any other Muslim, I respected Islam and I loved my dad and I was going to be his uh, successor and uh, but uh, it didn't work out that way. God had a plan for me and one day I was hearing about uh, Jesus Christ in radio Then I started uh, correspondence courses for four years and that led me to accept Christ in my life. Islam is the same uh, as it was 1400 years ago and today, as texts. We're talking about texts. People talk about moderate Islam, talk about political Islam, talk about fanatic Islam, and different names of Islam. But um, when I was raised, I never heard these terms, and my dad never taught me um, there is different kinds of Islam. There is one Islam. There is differences, for example, between Sunnah and Shia, but those differences are not in the main core of Islam. So, um, uh, for example, let's talk about jihad. Jihad exists in Shia and Sunnah and everywhere. So there is no moderate Islam and uh, a fanatic Islam. Islam is always the same and always will stay the same because texts are the same. They never changed. And um, uh, in my country, I lived 32 years in my country. I never heard these terms. It just, um, these terms are, are really wide in, in the West, but not in our countries. As Muslims, we used to look at uh, the West as a representative of Christianity. For example, in Morocco, we look at France because we were occupied by French. Uh, so we, we look at Christianity represented in France. And so many Moroccans, so many other Muslims in other countries look at United States as a Christian country. So whatever they see on TV, whatever they hear about Americans, that's what is Christianity. When I was uh, like studying the gospel, I thought I'm going to find like they drink uh, wine, they commit adultery, they go with girls and a lot of stuff. Uh, like the gospel encourages them to do that because that's what we see in movies and we think that's what is Christianity. And always uh, our, like my dad and other people around me, they always encourage us to think about the West as uh, Christians not as Westerns. As Muslims, we, we used to look at, uh, and we, still a lot of Muslims in the Muslim world look at it this way. It's Islam against Christianity and Judaism. They don't look at it as like um, it could be a country against country or politic against another politic. 
it's Christianity against Islam. They think we have like a conspiracy theory. It's in our blood. We believe that the whole world is against Islam. They are trying to convince, uh, to convert us. They are trying to um, use politics to to uh, defeat us in, because they are jealous of our uh, Islamic great uh, religion. So that's how we think about the West. We take it always religiously. It will never be politically or anything else. We look at it from a religion point of view. So whatever America is doing, for example, in Iraq, we look at it as a religious issue. What is doing in Afghanistan, because they, don't, they hate Islam. That's why they are doing it. So this, our glass, is how we see the world. It's true religion. I think the, the American church should be like more involved with uh, the Muslim world. Uh, what I see, the American church is less closed about itself. It's not reaching to Muslims, even in the United States. I have seen so many churches, they don't know anything about Muslims. They are, they are not trying to reach them. They are not trying to build bridges between them and, and Muslims. And the same thing applies to the Muslim world, like um, uh, uh, Middle East, North Africa. They have nothing um, shared with them. They don't want to help them get out of that. I see Muslims as victims. I look at my family, for example. I see my dad. He's not a terrorist. He's not a bad person. He's like everybody else. But he's a victim of his own religion. And people who explode themselves, they are not bad guys. They are just thinking they are pleasing God with what uh, what they are doing and what they are thinking. They want to please God. They want to do something right for the, the sake of their religion. So they are victims. We need to help victims um, to get out of Islam. And what I'm doing and what others are doing to, to help them, like we are trying to provide them alternatives, like Christianity, for example, it's a very good alternative for the Muslim world. And I believe, personally, we cannot counter Islam because Islam is a religion. We cannot counter a religion only by another religion and give them, compare to them, and let them choose. In the Muslim world, they, they don't have freedom of religion. They don't have even freedom of thinking. They cannot question Islam. They, they, do, they cannot dare even raise questions about Muhammad or the Quran. It's considered a, as a apostasy. So we will encourage them to question. And the, the American church should be involved in that process, either by helping local believers, like in Morocco, in Egypt, in Jordan, in uh, Saudi Arabia, we have secret local believers too, in Kuwait, in different countries. So we need to enable them, give them tools, give them uh, whatever is available to help them reach to their own um, brothers and sisters in their countries. I believe we need to join forces and work together because nobody can, uh, nobody has um, uh, like a unique solution. Nobody has the resources to do it by himself. So that's why we need you to help us and be involved in a very active way to help us to reach the, to the Muslim world. Because it's, the, the task is very huge. The task is, is bigger than everybody. Um, like uh, nobody can do it by himself. So that's why I'm asking you to be involved in a very active way. Help us, enable us, and be a part of what's going on in the Muslim world today. Um, in, in like 10, days, 10 years ago, we didn't hear about many converts in the Muslim world. Today we hear about thousands and even millions in Egypt, for example. We hear about more than 2 million converts in Egypt. And that could not have been done if some people didn't join forces and resources to reach to the Muslims in Egypt, for example. So that's why we ask you to be a part of what's happening now in the Muslim world. I'm doing what I'm doing personally out of my heart. And I'm doing it, I always, when I sit in front of the camera, I imagine my dad. I'm talking to my dad and my mom, my brothers and sisters. And always when I pray for them and think about them and think about myself, if I didn't have this opportunity through radio to hear about Jesus Christ, would I, uh, would I be here today? Probably I'm one of those terrorists or who exploded 
uh, uh, themselves because I like God and I want to please him. So I, I, I always look at it this way. I, I, I pray always for my family and I try to reach to my people, my own people, with my own heart. It just, it, 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 it's, it's very hard when I think about them being victims of Islam. Of Islam. And I just want you to feel what I feel toward my people. I want to help them. So I want you to help us help them get out of what they are suffering. They don't have any other options. They don't, they don't think they are wrong. So we need to show them that they are wrong in a respectful, loving way, and a very bold way, too. We, we don't change facts. We don't tell them lies. We, we say it boldly with love and respect to them.